G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. I am back in control of the Remora and I am ready to bring it down to Omicron. I have got a few things I need to keep in mind when I do that though. The main one being, I really need to land in the valley that my base is in. Whoop. That valley right there. I don't want to land on top of that mountain. I don't want to land on top of that mountain. I, while looking at this, also realise there's not really any nearby ice lake. There's some ice at the pole up there. There's an ice lake. I thought I just saw one. I've already gotten blind. I mean, I know there are ice lakes somewhere on the alien planet. I just don't seem to have any of them in my sights. What I need to do is try and figure out which way is straight down. And I don't have much fuel to work that out. Because if I don't go over the correct point, I am going to end up crashing into the mountains. If I put the main stage camera connector on here, once I get inside the gravity well, I should be able to level off to the artificial horizon and then use that camera to get an idea of what is straight down. So, let's do that. Just use a little bit of speed, not much. Don't want to go too fast because I really have to conserve fuel. If I have a look at my main stage fuel tanks, oops, I really should call them fuel tanks. The small tanks inside the command module are 90% full, but these ones are only 1% fuel. So my hydrogen fuel gauge on the HUD is actually wrong. Saying that I've got 5%, yeah, it's 5% overall, but it's not 5% usable, usable right now. So let's get that artificial horizon about level. Let's have a look. Where are we? We are slowly moving forward, but I think we need to move a bit further forward. And possibly that way? Yeah. Oh, hang on. I just realized something. Um, what I want to do is command module thrusters forward. You guys can get turned on. And main stage thrusters, they need to go off. All of them. The reason they all need to be off is I want to use the command module's fuel to push me forward right now to try and get some degree of control over my heading because if I use the main thrusters, I can't use them to slow myself down when I get close to the ground. I wouldn't be able to use them. So say my parachutes aren't strong enough, the command module's thrusters are going to be useless to me. So its fuel is useless to me. I need to preserve that tiny little bit of hydrogen in my main stage to use it as an emergency bit of lift just before I hit the ground to do a bit of a suicide burn to try and just make me nudge into the ground slow enough that I don't get damaged. Otherwise, I'm going to have to nose in with my drills because they're the hardest, toughest bit of my build. I am going to push forward now with the main, with their command module. So if I can get some more momentum away from the mountain. The artificial horizon is still dead level and that's putting me now getting into the snow area and heading closer to home. So hopefully that'll be all right. The rest of this, I'm just ballistic and hoping for the best. Oh, hold up. There is an asteroid over there. Um, which direction is that? Sun is setting, so that's going to be almost directly east. So if I go slash GPS, grav, asteroid, let's say it's maybe 10 k's east. So that's the GPS to give me an idea of where I might be able to go so that I can get to that asteroid because that asteroid is inside gravity which means it's a very low risk asteroid to occupy. It's a high fuel asteroid to occupy because I'm going to have to use fuel to resist the 0.14 G's but 0.14 G's isn't very much. If I can get there, land, put a landing gear down, I should be able to put a relay on that and that's going to get me what? 32 kilometers further from base. That'll be a really useful relay. And it's in enough gravity that hopefully the Reavers won't immediately be able to destroy it. 
And even if it's not uh, perfect as a relay, it might be a good, if it's got iron in it, a nice little uh, drop post. Because that's my plan. My plan from here is to do my next mission manned and hope that I can bring a refinery and enough stuff to build cargo containers. Probably large, small grid cargo containers with a battery and a few parachutes and drop them onto somewhere around on this plateau. I don't really care how close they get to the base. If they're close enough that they're on the plateau, I'm, I'm in a very good position. And potentially, if that asteroid turns out to be vertically straight above part of the plateau, that would be perfect. It's already in gravity, so I just have to build a little release mechanism on the bottom of it. That could auto weld, fill up the container, and then just drop it. Mm. I quite like this idea. I'm going to aim for that asteroid, assuming it's still there, when I next launch. Which hopefully won't be too long away, because hopefully I don't do any major damage to the remora. Now, parachutes. You need to be on. You need to be auto-deploy on. And that means we are good for landing. Hopefully. I'm just looking around at where there might be an ice lake and that could be one. I can't see anything else around here though. And that's a long way away. So I don't think there's much chance of me getting to an ice lake to refuel. I think I'm stuck using snow for the foreseeable future. Which, as it turned out, isn't as bad as I feared it might be. I think I'm going to be quite conveniently close. This has worked out very well, considering I had almost zero guidance other than trying to use my uh, connector camera. I can see the booster antennas down there. They're not too far from base either. All right, I'm leveling off. We are about to have our parachutes deploy. There we go, parachutes out. And speed is 20 meters a second. All right. You're going to need to have thrusters on. And just before landing, I'm going to turn on my inertial dampness. Or, you know, ideally I'd hit a tree. Because <laughs> that'll stop me. Oh. I think I've sli I'm slightly nose down. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. All right. Dampeners on. Oh! Oh, jeez. Uh... Okay. We're downed. I am hoping there is not too much damage. Uh, let's go find out. Where is McCrane? Oh, look, it's down there! How close is that? 600 meters? Yes! Awesome. I don't think, uh, I definitely wasn't expecting to get that close. That's, uh, much better than I anticipated. Now, crane time. Let's see what you can do. I think I damaged something on the bottom, but I don't know what. Well, that tells me I'm gonna have to add some parachutes for the next launch. I do not want to do damage on every landing. That would be very unfortunate. Ooh, actually, no, that's nearby damage. Oh, geez, the... <laughs> Command modules thrusters are still on. I should probably turn those off. Look at it! That looks basically undamaged. Oh man. She came down intact! <laughs> it is awkwardly positioned though. I will certainly say that much. Good job, Steve. You served me well. Thank you. Uh, kind of. Oh. Imagine if I'd landed just a little bit further back. The slide down that hill. Oi. Need to get the crane as close as possible. So that I can lift from as close to the center of mass as possible. And then once I have it lifted, see if I can sneak the crawler underneath. So I'll lock this to the ground. See if I can lift the whole constructed remora. Which I should be able to, given that I was able to 
Oh, actually, I wonder if I'll have to offload some of the iron. I'll try and see if I can get away without having to do that. There we go. Locked. Let's see if I can lift. And that'll be... Extend that. Hmm. <laughs> That's disconcerting. Uh, we need to get pistons. Inch pistons. You guys need a lot more strength. Right, looks like it's going to need even more. This is getting uh, disconcerting. One of the risks here is something that I can demonstrate by zooming into this rotor. The rotors are actually taking a fair bit of the force here. And at some point, those rotor heads will detach. And when they detach, the whole thing is going to come crashing down. So I'm not sure that I can actually lift this thing the way I'm trying to. I don't know if the crane is going to be strong enough because it's a small grid. A large grid crane could almost certainly do this because the road, the strength of that rotor's attachment is a bit stronger. But I'll just keep trying gradually increasing the strength of the pistons and see if I can lift this thing because I would like to be able to. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's going to work. That's unfortunate. I can't lift a loaded remora. I'm going to need to bring... I guess I'm best off... Yeah. I'm best off bringing the Goofy down here, offloading as much of that iron ore as I can, and then... coming... then attempting to lift it at that point. Oh, if this is the worst thing I have to do to get this iron, it's... <laughs> it's not that bad having to offload it by hand, I guess. Assuming this is enough. Because it might not be. I'm noticing the remora is slowly shifting backwards as I empty it. I'm wondering if I'd made it very nose heavy, which is why I couldn't level it off as I was coming down once the parachutes are deployed. Maybe it is more level without all of this mass on board. This also makes me think that what I should probably be doing is designing the remora to come back empty. So whenever I go up for ores, it should be coming back empty and just dumping stuff down. So dropping cargo containers with all of their goodies inside and not actually coming back with a load of ore. So maybe that was a mistake in the first place. Maybe I should have designed it with the intent for it to be a um, just dump and run sort of thing. It'll drop a load down the parachutes down separately and then it can come down in a Potentially even semi-powered state, because it would have that much less weight on board. This is a relatively full load of iron for the Goofy, so it's not too bad for a ship that wasn't intended to mine iron. So we'll see how much I end up with from this 70 odd thousand iron ore that I've brought back. Please, Remora, please lift off the ground. Uh, oh, I may as well bring the crawler down this time. Alright, let's see if this works this time. Please. Oh. Oh. Um. Uh. Bad. Uh, we might need to uh, extend that out a little bit so that I don't get caught on the front of the crane truck. <laughs> that was a little bit awkward. Oh no, it's caught again. There we go. That's better. Ooh. Why is it spinning? I don't know why the rotor decided it wanted to spin around that way. That's not helpful. Oh, I wonder if I can get the truck under there enough. I don't feel confident that I will be able to. I'm going to see if I can sneak the crawler in there. At least the crane can lift it, even though it doesn't do a great job of it. There we go. Out of the way. Let's drop all the way down. Oh. Just off the ground. I could just line it up. No! Oh, I've got the... Ah, I've got it wedged. No, don't be like that. I know I could have locked it there, but it was so askew it would have caused me no end of grief. I have, however, I think, maybe made this possible. 
or impossible. Maybe impossible. I'm underneath though. Let's try the crane now. Ugh. I'm gonna spin it around a bit further. That's uh, not terrible. I mean, it is, it is not neatly lined up, but it is not terrible. Uh, I might lock it there, I think. Don't like my chances of getting much better. So the whole recoverable rocket thing is not necessarily my best idea. Oh, hold up. I just came up with an idea that might have made this easier. So the booster stages, I could kind of attach them the wrong way round and have their thrusters pointing downward, put them on both sides, still have the crane attached, put their thrusters on override to counter like counterbalance a lot of the remora's weight, which might make it more maneuverable on the crane and therefore able to put it in a better position on the crawler. Might have to try that in the future. Now, with the forces that I've used and looking at the way that rotor is that's center right of screen at the moment. I need to do something to prevent catastrophe when I dis detach. Because I was clanging something hard there. Oh, nope. Too much. Uh, maybe about there. That's probably going to be the same for a lot of the others, but that looks like it might be enough. Alright, let's see what happens when I detach now. Three, two, one. Yeah. So see how it kind of sprung upwards? If I'd not kept in mind that I'd been working that rotor really, really, really hard, I would have had the whole crane potentially flick over and pass the lower piston through the other part of the hinge. Kind of the same idea as what happened to the Remora's crawler when it tipped over backwards. And that is something I obviously want to avoid. Five breaks off, let's head on back to base. The Remora should pass, uh, be able to be drivable on the crew on the crawler as it is. So, something that I've been thinking about ever since I launched the Remora last week was some form of... Ooh, uh, that's right, I left that rotor on. <laughs> uh, crane rotor, 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 off. Okay. <laughs> I left the rotor between the in part of the hitch off on. Uh, so something I've been thinking about since last week is building some sort of launch facility for the Remora and any further rockets that get upgraded or improved or alternate rockets that I use. What I'm kind of thinking of is something fairly upright so the Remora would be locked in position ready for launch in a vertical orientation. I haven't decided exactly how to go about it yet but that's one of the projects I want to do as soon as I've welded up the whole garage and made sure that these two buildings are visually complete. Sure they might have a few touch-ups here and there afterwards but I want them to be visually complete before I move on to any other buildings. But I'm thinking a launch facility on one of the other little rises around here. So not terribly close to the base but close enough that I could use a sort of transport truck. Oh, I might fill up my oxygen balls. A transport truck to move any goods between that facility and my home base. And that rush is heading straight for us. Let's see how much power you've got. Battery. You got enough. All right, let's do this thing. It's time to escape. Although, I do wonder if I can escape. This Kapak is still technically there, though I don't know if he'll trigger it because he's offline. I'm heading back over to the Remora because... Uh, Steve will definitely trigger a spawn. So I want to know if I'm in trouble over here. In fact, could do. Let's get in the crawler. See if I can move it out of the way. Or move it back to base. Even if the drones are going to come in, I would prefer the Remora and its crawler to be back at base. If that happens, rather than out in the open. Oh, yep. Incoming drones. Come on, let's get back. Squid incoming. I really hope it's not coming on my position. Come on. 
No, this isn't strong enough to get uphill. Oh, that squid is close. Oh, jeez. Okay, debris raining around me. Squid shadow over the top. Oh, <laughs> that was close. Oh, man. Oh, man. All that debris raining around me was terrifying. Okay. I'm so glad I took the remora back to base. Crawler has just barely enough power for that hill. So I think what I'm going to do once I've got the remora back together and all the parts back at base is sit down with my list and have a look at what I should do to... Well, reorder it and prioritize things more sensibly. Oh, I'm out here. I'm going to go get the unknown signal while I'm in the absconder. Why not? Small distraction from my remora recovery operations, which have been surprisingly successful so far. I think it will hopefully be a relatively quick turnaround to the next launch. So my idea will be, let's get it, well, get it back together, get it refueled, and then prep for what I might need to bring with me to go up on a manned launch to set up a system for returning full containers of hopefully iron ingots back to the planet. Ta-da! Ooh, that's actually not too bad. I think I've only probably got about 12 of them. <laughs> Although that's probably nothing on Capax collection. I'm mainly collecting these when I do because of the daily needs stuff. For my manned mission, I'm going to need to take as much food as I possibly can, so that's going to be another bit of prep that I need to do. Let's make sure that the food truck is producing good, valuable stuff for me to get as much to take with me as possible. I do still really love riding this, driving, riding, whatever you want to call it, this tank. It's so much fun. Not as practical as something with four wheels or something with thrusters, but fun. that's what it's about. I like my little car park that's out here now. <laughs> it kind of works. Oh wait, I should have this ready to speed off in rather than having to do three point turns while I'm worried about drones coming to attack me. Right, and battery to recharge. How much power did I end up using then? It's 190 something. Okay, I use 50. So a trip like that's gonna cost me 50 kilowatts. Yeah, I need to get a fair bit more charge in there. You can see the Remora boosters over there. Still got a bit of daylight left. Let's get going and get collecting those two. Looks like they've landed almost right next to each other. Which I suppose makes sense, given what we know of the physics of space engineers, because there's no, like, wind resistance or anything like that, there's nothing to push them off their trajectory. So they're just going to fall straight down from wherever I drop them, which is side by side on the remora. They should land, and they have landed basically side by side. Oh no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. Uh... I'm gonna need to fix that. Let's turn the parachutes off. <laughs> Oops. <coughs> oh man. <coughs> parachutes deploying on a crane. That is not ideal. Get this one onto the rear locks. I might even try and put it in a position where I can lock both of them down. Don't think I'm gonna be able to get the other one locked on. Unfortunately. I think I'm going to need to consider whether I put some landing gear on the front truck part as well as the rear bit. As it might be a valid option for how I move around. Now I'm going to do this a bit differently to how I've done it in the past. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swing this over the front half. Even though I can't lock it there, I think it will give me better weight distribution having this dangling and swinging about at the front than uh, doing the same at the rear. Alright, I think that's about as balanced as I'm going to get that mass. So it's time to chance it. Get those wheels on the ground. Lift that off the truck so I can actually drive. And now 
Okay. Nope. That's not happy. Okay, that's worse than the other alternative, so... This is going to be very hairy if I have to go on any slopes that put me sideways. I don't have a better method that I can think of to do this. I really need to add those landing gear to the front truck so I can drop stuff on the truck and the trailer when I'm picking up a double load like this. As the weight distribution will be far better that way. But looks like it should be okay. So that didn't go too badly. I thought I was actually uh, landing at sunset. I must have been up in space a lot longer than I thought. I landed near dawn, which means my marker I made earlier, the GPS for the asteroid that was in gravity, is probably the opposite direction to what I thought. So I was probably looking at east when I measured it rather than west. Either way, hopefully the GPS up there will be a reminder that I need to look for an asteroid in gravity when I launch. I'm going to come back and crane those later. <laughs> I just... I've done enough craning for today. Uh, let's have a look at how much iron I've gotten from the ore that I brought back with the remora. It has completely refined it all and we've gotten 30,000. Okay. It's not... as much as I was hoping. But it is at least something substantial that puts me up to... Back at having 45,000, which isn't too bad. So yeah, all told, not great, not horrible. Acceptable. Is there any room in here for me to put a button panel that won't be super awkward? I suppose I can put it right beside the door. The reason I'm thinking for a button panel is... If I put a button panel in right here... Uh, let's match it to the door. I can set up a button to turn off this sensor. So when I come in the room and I know I'm going to be remote controlling something for a while, I will turn off that sensor to leave this vent on when I get in the chair. Can I see the vent from here? See? Now that I'm in the chair, that vent has gone to off. That is why I was running out of oxygen when I was sitting in the chair. The whole room was running out of oxygen because myself and Capac here were both breathing it all. So, if I've got a button that I can manually turn that sensor on and off, it will allow me to sit in the chair and have the vent continue to provide me oxygen. Which is obviously a better solution than what I had before. So, let's sensor, garage, office, toggle block on and off. So, if I'm going to go sit in the chair, I just go toggle it off, sit down, the vent stays on. When I go to leave, toggle the sensor back on, and then when I leave the room, say, like getting in a chair, the vent turns off. That is a better setup. And a fairly simple fix too, thankfully. Right, so what I want to do now is think about the stuff that I need to do to get the remora back up in the air. Oh great, it's already requesting assistance. Um, let's get out of there. Think about the stuff I need to get myself back into space. And then I want to have a look at... So once I've dealt with this sparrow, I'm going to think about what I want to do next on the base. There are quite a few tasks due to be done. Oh, sparrow got some... No! Searchy! Oh, destroyed the large thruster too. Didn't just knock it off. Ah, oh. right. <sighs> How badly damaged is the other one? Can't see it at all. Ah, oh, you. S oh, you're almost. You're almost in range. I can get some pot shots, pot shots out at you. If I manually control a turret quickly. Turret. Got my turret. Control. Where are you? No, it's out of range now. That was close though. That was very close. Like, that one is probably the closest any of these have ever come to my base. Not happy about that. Also, 
what I'm not happy about is that that sparrow is still broadcasting. So that means it might still have some active guns. Oh, it did so much damage to the base too. Sandbags. Sandbags are getting higher on the priority list. And I'm remembering the thing I did right way back at the start with the original Goofy. I'm going here on foot. I'm not bringing a vehicle into the into the firing line again. Ah, poor Sergi. Doesn't look like. I mean, it would have shot me now. I can't see it very clearly from back there, though. It is very dark! Yeah, I think it had the turret on the bottom. Stop running away from me. You're losing your tail. You got too many batteries for me to find all your batteries. I'm just going to chop you into chunks. Hopefully not get slapped around for it. There we go, that's... A little bit less intact. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, that was unanticipated. <laughs> I think that's going to go a fair distance. Oh dear. Let's chop off its other wing. I'm like a cruel child with a fly. Oh. Right. Time to focus. Things I need to get done. So with the list, I'm going to move it from this building in here and I'm going to move it into the garage. Because I think the garage is much better suited to have that sort of thing in it. Uh, right. It's been a while since I looked at this. Uh, we have built the rocket, so goodbye. Uh, still need a rocket pad. Uh, don't have a stone refinery at the stone mine. And actually don't plan to do that now. I want to send iron back from space. So that can go. Uh, more power production, yeah. Yeah. Find more underground ores, yep, yep. Build new med bay, build garage, repair shop, outdoor power hookups. Got some of that, haven't got that yet. My new to-do list with a couple of extra items on it. Prep asteroid base. So that's gonna be things like building the stuff for a refinery, building the stuff for some cargo containers to launch back to the planet, that sort of thing. I am also going to uh, need a food stockpile for that. So that's going to be second. Refueling the remora is obviously needed. And then these are the tasks. So build sandbags, build... Which won't actually be mobile grid this time. They're going to be large grid. I'm trying to think through some designs and I might even test some in creative mode. Tiny little buildings that'll look like little outposts that I plan to put throughout the valley to have... Turrets on them, probably just solar panels to keep them charged. Although I can use wind turbines, so maybe wind turbines would be better. Yeah, probably wind turbines would be better. So wind turbines and a turret to try and give myself some extra ability to shoot at drones from multiple angles and potentially reduce the chance of things like the Searchy happening again. Poor Searchy. It will get repaired. But not yet. I don't need it terribly soon, so uh, I'll repair it when I next need it. I need to build a rocket pad because I do want to do that. What else? What else? Do -do -do. That's kind of it. So, yeah, I kind of like having it on the to-do list over here. I'm also going to mess with the colors. Try and make it look a bit more matching to other stuff around here. Yeah, that looks better. Now matches the keyboard. So now what I want to do is have a think about what I'm going to need to take up with me to that asteroid to make an effective refining base to send hopefully ingots back down. Because if I can send ingots back down, I don't need to make as many drops. And ideally, then I don't need to send back anything quite so heavy. My thought would be that I should be able to, and let's turn off the assembler. I should be able to take up a basic assembler and a basic refinery. Basic assembler should make everything I need 
but I just want to check that. So if I'm going to make drops, I'm either going to use large cargo containers or medium cargo containers. And I'd be dropping a large cargo container, a battery, and then parachutes, which I can't queue up here, which is still annoying. Um, but I know parachutes don't have anything special in them, so all of these components can be made in a basic assembler. I don't know why I'm slowly turning. Then... That should be fine. So I can minimize the weight that I need to bring up by going basic assembler and basic refinery. That is good. I'll only be doing this on an in-gravity asteroid if it's got iron. If it doesn't have iron, there's no point. If it doesn't have iron, it will just be a relay. And in that case, what I would be setting up is a battery, some solar panels and an antenna. But since I'm going up as a manned mission first, so minimal stuff that I would need to take up is enough for a refinery, basic refinery, a basic assembler, and then I would want two batteries. So that's not too much yet. I think that'll fit in the remora as it currently stands. Then everything else, technically, I could manufacture up there. So my plan would be fly the remora there, land the remora inside gravity, build those four blocks, and then start building something out to put down some solar panels, but use the resources on the asteroid to make those solar panels. And then I can start building piston-mounted, rotor-mounted drills up there and start collecting loads and loads of materials to slowly process. I kind of like the idea of maybe taking enough grids up for a large refinery, though. Not taking the rest of the components, because that's a lot of steel to need to move, but if I just take up the extra grids that are needed, the rest of it can be manufactured there. Now, if I look for assembler... How many grids does it need? Another 10. So if I just take 30 grids, plus the parts for the batteries, the refiner, basic refinery and assembler, that should be everything I need. That's not too much. So one of the things that's really important for me to prep before I go to space is to carry enough food on board the remora. I don't go through too much, but I would like to have some proper foodstuffs aboard. Alright, so we're going to make some space meal bars. I'm going to, when I come back with some more ice, I'm going to make some more water. Make sure I've got plenty of both of those. And potentially remove the... Or should I just bring Steve with me on the roof? <laughs> I'm sort of tempted to bring Steve with me so that he doesn't cause any spawns down on the planet. So I guess I need to grab a whole bunch of ice now. Because I need to make the water, and I need to make the fuel. And the first load of ice is back. So much busy work to do after each of these launches. Uh-oh. No, Remora. No, don't cook things. No, don't throw out the stone either. Ah. Uh, Remora. Thrust. All of them. Off. Oh, great. Parachute. <laughs> Parachutes deployed. Parachutes. Off. Ugh. Also, sorters. Dang it. Oh, that's the other thing I need to do. It's not just charging up the absconder. I need to also put the ice into the command module for the remora. Because I used some of its fuel. Conveniently, I can use the <laughs> access port on this hydrogen tank to get the ice I need to put into the remora's command module so that I can... <sighs> Get everything fueled up. How are the tanks doing? So they're just under half. That's not too bad. Try and remember to do that on the next trip back as well. I think the absconder's probably going to have chewed through a lot of its ice. Let's fill it up before I head out for my next load. So that's going to be kind of the rhythm of this is go grab some ice, bring it back, fill up the remora's main stage and the absconder. Hopefully making both of them nice and ready by the time that the main stage is ready. I was trying to think of something else to do today. Like, something to do in between the launches that made sense. And I really can't... I couldn't think of anything that made a lot of... 
sense and was also fun. I kind of just want to get back up there again. I really, really, really want to see if I can bring back enough iron that I could then get root properly stuck into building some stuff around here. I know I've got 50,000 or 45,000 iron on the base right now, so I could probably get some decent progress. But it feels like I'm better off going up there again. Oh, look at the scar I've made in the landscape. Just from this ice removal. It is ridiculous. But necessary. Well, based off last time, this should be enough fuel for me to fill the remora. Now that I've made my second trip back. That means if I attach the booster modules, I should be ready to launch next week. Made up a bunch of food. I'll go put a bunch of this ice into the water recycling thing so that I've got a heap more water. But I barely used up much of the food I was carrying on me while I was doing the last mission. Although the next mission is going to be a longer one. Because I'm going to have to build stuff up there and I'm going to keep building stuff up there. Oh, hold up. I've got to turn off my generators on here. Skonda's battery is already more than what I started the day with, so that's a win. The Remora's main stage tanks. Ah. Oh! So are the command modules. Right. Remora is recharged. It just needs its booster modules, and I'm good to go. Awesome. Uh, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. I'm going to have a little bit of an interesting launch because of the weird angle that I'm at. But hopefully I'll be able to correct that. And hopefully I'll be able to pick up a bit of charge on these. Let's grab the stuff from the assembler and see if I can get it into the remora. Right, you're full. Oh, and you don't hold enough power cells for one whole battery. No! But you are holding more steel plate than a battery, I think. I take out 20 of those. Can I put in four of those? No! Can't! Okay, I'm going to have to get clever about how I get stuff into these inventories. <sighs> or I just go back to one battery. In fact, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think I might ditch the second battery because I can make power cells up there. I can use stone, refine it into nickel. So they're big components. It doesn't make a lot of sense to carry them all up there. We've got over 80 power cells. We've got 200, 300 steel plate. In fact, let's just Turn off the assembler production. Let's queue up the stuff that I wanted. Just so that I can check to make sure I've got the right stuff. Battery. So I need to have 280 steel plate, 90 construction components, 80 power cells. Let's just check that out. Got the 280 steel plate. Got 115 computers. Got the 80 power cells. Have I got... Yeah, I've got 100 construction components. Have I got 20 motors? Because I need 20 motors and 4 displays. 20 motors, 4 displays. I've got everything I need. The remora is packed. Alright. Get some oxygen before I suffocate. Oh no, it's not. No, no, no. I've got one thing. Grid. Get my 30 grids. And I'll put them on board as well. There we go. That means I can make a proper assembler and proper refinery up there. Which will get me more iron per bit of iron ore than I refi- that I build- that I build? That I mine. <laughs> cool. Oi. Well, that was a bit of prep work. But, I am very happy that my landing was successful enough that the remora is sitting here back at base again. A little crooked, but it's still here. I've got the boosters ready to reattach. I've got it fully fueled. I've got it full of components that I think I need for the base. If there's something else that you think I should take up that I can't make from stone and iron, let me know. Otherwise, next time, put those boosters on, launch up to space in person. So there's all that and plenty more to come, just as the sun's rising, and I will see you guys then.
Sparrow got some- No! Searchy! Oh.